Rusty Quill Presents. Ain't Slayed Nobody is a produced actual play podcast intended for adults, and may contain material that some people find disturbing. Please see the episode notes for content warnings, and listen with care. Welcome to Push the Roll, a low-prep, dialogue-only actual play series that incorporates ideas from our Patreon posse into the game as the story develops. Join up at patreon.com slash ain't slayed to contribute. And enjoy the madness. Riz is wandering around the office, finding any tools like screwdrivers and, you know, like anything um, that might be used to loosen screws or uh, be used as weapon. You know what I mean? Just like random shit, just trying to get stuff and shove it in a bag. With all the filming equipment you've got and tripods and stands and stuff like that, you've got toolkits. And yeah, you can get access to stuff like that really easily. Adrian is cleaning himself up to... To look suitably camera ready. <laughs> Adrian, I don't know if you've seen Wacky Races out of the US, but, uh, you know, it was a slapstick comedy, but I have filmed, you know, situations like this before. They were just comedic, is all. I did a few uh, driving scenes on emergency, but it was always on in studio with a rear projected street with two PAs wobbling the car back and forth <laughs> as it stood stationary in a studio. Now I'll actually be stunt driving. I believe that comes with an, an extra pay if I'm taking on um, stunt work, as it were. It sounds like our budget grew considerably, so I think that will be fine. And God bless the minister for smiling on us. Dillrymple, I always enjoy meeting a fan. Might we have a meeting with this minister when all is said and done? Dillrymple has, has come out of the office and says, uh, what? you want to meet the minister? Yes, and what is her name? All the good humour drains out of his face, and he just looks you in the eye and says, pray you never meet the minister. Uh, steady, Dalrymple. Um. Anyway, sorry, uh, we were talking about what material assistance the, uh, the Ministry of Information can provide for you. Now, yes, if you need money uh, for any equipment or replacement equipment, we can arrange that now. I can have a banker's draft written up for whatever sum you need. Do you need personnel? Do you need equipment? Uh, do you need weaponry? Uh, what, what do you need? Weaponry? Um, I think if we just had £50,000, we would be ready to go. Uh, yes, 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 of course. Oh, sorry, 80,000. I forgot about the talent. Oh, of course, of course. Thank you, Sullivan. Yes, the, will the equipment be there on set? A set? A set? No, no, no. Uh, remember, we are doing this according to uh, the procedures that you have established this morning. Right. I think any deviation from this would probably displease the minister at this stage. She is very impressed with the tack you have taken, and uh, we really want to carry on impressing her. Hmm. Well, then I think um, a bus at, uh, where was it again, Ben, that you were saying? Covent Garden. Uh, if we could get a bus staged there. Uh, sorry, when do you say staged there? I, uh, yes, we can arrange for... Um, uh, perhaps the driver to be indisposed, if you wish to take over control of the bus. Is that what you're implying? Uh, yes, it sounds as though, uh, Adrian, you're going to... Are you going to be the one to drive for us? Uh, yes, if the driver is indisposed, then a new driver shall take up position behind the wheel. I can only assume that... Uh, more safety precautions shall be undertaken for the preservation of the talent than were taken this morning. Yes. Take care of the legal and insurance issues for us. I don't believe Adrian is qualified to drive a bus. I don't see that being an issue at all. Perhaps some pillows on the inside. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, Cecil. 
Very well, then we'll meet you at uh, Covent Garden. I shan't be there myself, but um, I believe that there is a bus route that travels down uh, the Strand. Perhaps if we arrange for the nearest bus stop on the Strand to, uh, yes, to have a bus waiting for you at, shall we say, 2pm, would that be adequate? Very well. Hmm. Get out into the street. Break the fourth wall. Theatre is life. Now you're getting into it. <laughs> it was this similar philosophy when I did Lear with Peter Brook. Never happened. Absolutely never happened. <laughs> <laughs> I have become accustomed to having tea at 2 p.m. Maybe we could push it. 2.30? 2 p.m. it is, he says, <laughs> and then heads out. <laughs> Ben stares out after him. I mean, absolutely white as a sheet, because he understands exactly what's going to happen. He understands we're, we're driving a bus through through pedestrians, and uh, it just feels he, he can't stop this now. Before we go, I've become so intrigued with the idea of this uh, mysterious figure of the minister that I want to see <laughs> if I can learn anything about her. Because a, Adrian is mm. now convinced that uh, mm, she's a fan, and one could always benefit <laughs> from uh, friends in high places. Hmm. And while she may be severe to a factotum like Cecil Dillerimple, I may be able to have a, a more charming touch. So, what approach are you taking to trying to learn more about her? Hmm. I guess my highest <laughs> persuade is something. So maybe before Cecil gets out of the building, I might uh, buttonhole him in the stairwell and just like, come on, man to man, Dillerimple, tell me what you know about this minister, huh? Um, perhaps I might be able to... Uh, Set up a, a meeting one-on-one -on -one if she is such an admirer of my work, as you say. Well, give me that persuade roll, then. Okay, here we go. Uh-huh. Come in. Oh! Oh, zero, one. That's a one, dog. Wow. Oh, dear. Oh, hey. dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> 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 so, Dadarimple looks at you wide-eyed. Did you not listen to what I said earlier, man? Uh, the minister... The minister is... Uh, is is the minister? Is she... I don't even know her... Her name. She just... She just appeared one day in Whitehall and she's been there ever since in in the corridors like some grey spectre i i don't know how much you follow politics my dear man uh. <laughs> you do realize how much trouble the government is in at the moment with the the three-day week and the miners strike and the unrest from the unions in general oh yes dreadful business and we're for the workers <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Oh, right, right. Greedy, greedy sods, all of them. Exactly. But this unrest is rather destabilising the government and the, uh, the the prime minister's position, and I, I do rather fear that he has uh, perhaps brokered a deal he should not have, have brokered in order to... Maintain some degree of control. Uh, huh. And the minister, the minister, well, she... I, 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 I no longer know who's in charge of the government. I really don't. I mean, she is supposedly just the minister, and the prime minister is the prime minister, and yet, and yet, and yet... Huh. If you really wish, I can arrange for you to meet her. I imagine she will want to supervise, or at least to witness your your filming this afternoon. But, but even if you don't see her there, if you have attracted her attention, if she finds you interesting, I imagine you will meet her sometime. God help you. Most of what Adrian took from that is attracted and finds you interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Then hopefully an intermittent encounter might be arranged. 
<laughs> I understand that, that you find her cold, Cecil, but um, I have my ways of melting the icy feminine heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, indeed, indeed. If you'll excuse me, I do need to head back to Whitehall and make uh, some last-minute arrangements for your, uh, for your filming this afternoon. Tally home. <laughs> Thank you, Cecil. <laughs> Is Ben allowed to have a quick conversation with the minister? <laughs> oh, yes. With the voice behind him. So I quite like the idea that he's sort of found a corner of the office or he's sort of hunched over the tea trolley and, and he's just sort of saying to this voice behind him, I can't do this. I can't. Of course you can, Ben. Of course you can. You have strengths that you are not aware of. Strengths. Your core is forged from the very strongest iron. You represent all that is great about this country, all that has made Britain great. The will to succeed, regardless of the human cost. The importance of appearance over the sordid details of life. You understand these things. You understand both the superficiality that has made this country and the corruption that lies beneath it. And, oh, oh, this makes you so special. Ben is not even really listening to this. At this point, he's just going to sort of tip over the tea trolley <laughs> to get this out of his head and sort of just kind of throw it over and just sort of hope that the crash in some way makes it go away. Kirby was eating cake off the trolley at the time you did that. <laughs> <laughs> You've both seen Ben apparently just talking to himself, looking quite agitated, and then just tips the tea trolley over. Oh, that's a fucking mess. The camera wasn't enough, Ben? Just, you know, give him some space. Give him, give him a little room. What? There's Jarjeeling everywhere. <laughs> He's right. I should go home. I, I, I shouldn't. No, 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 no. I, no, I shouldn't be part no, of this. No. I, I, I can't. Yeah, I, I agree. Riz, you can, you can manage the shoot. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, Ben, Ben, why don't we talk it out? What's, what's, uh, what's, what's going on? You're doing so well. And we sort of find a corner of the office, and uh, I, people are going to die. We don't know that. And think of it like this: for every bit of harm that we do for any any potential death that occurs, we will be preventing so much more, orders of magnitude more harm and death, potential death. It's small sacrifices for big wins. Didn't you hear? The minister loves what we're doing. That's what the minister told me. The minister sounded like you. <laughs> I'm flattered. <laughs> uh, when did you, uh, when did you speak with the minister? Just now. Regardless of the human cost, she said, and she said I was what was great about this country. You know, I think that just might be your own inner voice telling you what you already know, which is that, yes, you are doing great things here. And so you should carry on. What are you going to do if you go home? I, I, I'm strong. I'll carry on. You are strong. You're right. I am right. <laughs> All right. So, everyone, <laughs> where did Adrian get to? <laughs> Kirby's going to hand Adrian a piece of paper that says safety precautions. Mm -hmm. And it just has a picture of two buses on top of each other. <laughs> and one's sliding off and it has the no sign drawn through it. And the bus on top actually has its own wheels. This is hand drawn. <laughs> it's hand drawn. Yes. Please, come on. And this has to be like an artist role. Like, isn't there some sort of <laughs> <laughs> an art role? What does this picture look like? <laughs> yeah. As it's sliding off, there's a word bubble on the top <laughs> bus. It just says "help." <laughs> yeah. We need to be safe, Adrian. I, I know you think you can drive this bus, but there are serious risks here, and we haven't had proper rehearsal. I'm worried about. You're driving. Oh, how hard could it be? Do you have drive auto? <laughs> Do I have drive auto? 
How hard could it possibly be? <laughs> well, twice as hard as a regular bus, I imagine. <laughs> no, yes, Ex- exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a top driver? <laughs> no, man, there is not a secondary driver perched atop a primary driver on the lower story of the double deck. I feel like the gains that we got by describing the bus to get this into Kirby's head are undone by his literal interpretation of what you said. So. <laughs> We've confused you further. Still confused, just in a new way. Suffice to say, it can be nearly as complicated as you imagine, so I'm I'm sure I I won't find it difficult at all. That's fine. You said you did something like this on emergency? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I did a car chase. (laughs) With the people shaking the... Yes, yes, yes. You understand. (laughs) That should be enough, yeah. (laughs) Some people say that the stunt drivers are the, are the main thing, but I think that the actor selling it in the shot is the star of the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearly two o'clock. Oh, do you want to make some new tea? Which is when the bus is being left at the stop for us. Oh, yes. Let's go. <laughs> it's only about ten minutes walk from where you are maybe 15 minutes walk down to the Strand. And you can see, sure enough, as you head down the Strand towards where the turning towards Covent Garden is, that there is at a bus stop a double-decker bus that's just sitting there idling. Right. I'm impressed. It pays to have powerful friends. Hmm. Are there people on it? There are. It does seem to be quite packed. There are, (laughs) yeah, there's a few dozen people, men, women, children, sitting there, all of them oddly quiet, Mm. sitting there still, tense, looking nervously out the window as you're approaching the bus. Okay. Thank you for adding the children, Scott. My pleasure. What is wrong with you, Cub? I think Kirby will go on first and just uh, kind of make an announcement to the passengers and say, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Kirby Sullivan from Hollywood. Um, You may have seen my Buddy's Burgers commercials. Uh, I don't know if there are any buddies over here, but um, we're going to be shooting a little film on the bus today. And if I cue you for laughter or screaming or panic, you know, whatever it is, if you could just play along, I think this is going to be something that's seen very widely in your country. We have a very talented actor driving the bus today, Mr. Adrian Trumbull of Emergency. Riz is out there clapping. (laughs) Adrian mounts the stairs with pressed, like, praying hands, like, thank you, thank you, you're too kind. (laughs) Everyone on the bus is just staring at you. Mm. Those of you on the bus, which I I mean, it sounds like all of you at this stage, could give me psychology rolls if you want. Yes, let's. Hell yeah. I'll do that while I'm doing crowd warm ups. Like, everybody say, (laughs) ooh. They do not say, ooh. Ah. I'm going to spend seven luck to make that a hard success. I failed my psychology role, so Adrian is like, I'm sorry, madam, I lost her. You may may remember this in other lines from Emergency, where I play the role of Dr. Raleigh Pepper. But today, after having done some work on my backstory, I'm Bob, the bus driver. And and, and as soon as the cameras start to roll, I'm afraid that's the only name that I'm going to answer to. I think appropriately then, perhaps Riz is the only one who notices that these people are just staring at you in stark and open terror. (laughs) I think that is going to make their screams sound more authentic. (laughs) I will keep that to myself. (laughs) Kirby's going to unfold his director's chair and set it in the aisle. (laughs) Okay. Of the bus? Yeah, of the bus. Unsecured director's chair in the center of the (laughs) aisle. Yeah. I assume I have the bigger camera now, too, so that'll be on a tripod in front of me, (laughs) focused on Adrian for the moment. But it has a swivel, so I can get the the bus shot, too. 
Yeah, I mean, you can angle it so that you could perhaps look out the window and get some of the driver's cab. Mm, yeah. Is Adrian getting into the driver's cab? I do. I, I sit down with total confidence and look down at the controls in utter confusion. Yes, this all <laughs> makes total sense. Let's see here. As you look around at the controls, on the dashboard, you can see across the speedometer what looks like a smear of blood. <laughs> hmm. He feels kind of involuntarily where he was nearly <laughs> concussed this morning and is hoping he's not bleeding again. It's like, hmm, oh dear. Oh. The previous uh, driver has not met with an unfortunate accident. Dangers lurk all around us, as you know. Adrian, could you say that one more time? I didn't have the boom. Mm. Uh, he's kind of extending <laughs> the boom into the driver's cab. There's dangers lurk all around us, as you know. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> and uh, I'll uh, just shut the door and like put the bus in gear. And you probably jolts and jerks a few times <laughs> as Adrian struggles with the transmission and finally gets it on the rolling on the road. Can we say that we've brought a second camera as well? Mm. I'd love Riz to have maybe brought Ben along with her to keep an eye on him and just like have it set up on the other end of the park area mm. just so that she can kind of capture the <laughs> the oncoming. So you're going around to Covent Garden itself to set up the camera, are you? Yeah. That's nice. Second unit. So Covent Garden from where the bus is at the moment, it is just around the corner. It's like a minute's walk. So you just go down the side street, down to there, and as you head down to Covent Garden, I mean, for those who don't know it, the area around Covent Garden itself is a bit of a pedestrian precinct, and is something of a tourist attraction. You get street performers there, and tourists are gathering around. There are shops around as well, and a fair number of shoppers. So even on a weekday like this, it's close enough to lunchtime that the area is quite busy. It's not absolutely packed, but there are certainly dozens and dozens and dozens of people around here just milling around, you know, some of them watching buskers, some of them heading off to shops, some of them just enjoying what passes for good weather in London. And you could give me spot hidden rolls as well, if you'd like. Where is our agent of destruction, Ben? I'm with Riz. I think she like locks arms with him and she maybe she's like giving him a little pat on the back. You're doing so well. But he did not sabotage the bus, right? <laughs> That's what I'm really <laughs> curious about. Well, I was wondering about this. <laughs> mm. Do we want to finish the spot hidden thing first, or shall I? We can perhaps have a flashback if you did something nasty to the bus first. Riz, it failed. I failed. I mean, I, I'm not too far off a success, so is there some luck thing I can do? Yeah, yeah, if you want to spend some luck on that. All right, so... Uh, that's now a success. You see that stony-faced woman dressed in black standing in Covent Garden itself in one of the, the little avenues that leads down between the shops, and standing there almost in the shadows, watching carefully. She's looking in your direction and every now and then looking around at the crowd, she looks impassive, but at the same time, you can tell that she is keenly interested in what she's looking at. Riz? Yeah? I think that's the minister. If I look in the direction he's pointing, what do I see? Do I see the woman? Yeah, as he points her out, yeah, you do see this very stony-faced woman with iron grey hair standing there, watching. Is she looking at us? Now she is. <laughs> I think Riz thinks she's crushing this today, <laughs> and so I think that she's going to give just like a proud little smile if they make eye contact, and a little bit, like a little nod. Okay. Well, she's come to see. That's very flattering, you know, she's she's... I'm sure she's very busy, and so the fact that she's here to see what we can do. She's watching us. She was watching us earlier. Yeah, well, you know, she's commissioned these films, so 
That makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. You're right. I'm fine. We can't stop now, can we? No, that's the spirit. <laughs> honk honk. <laughs> <laughs> And I just want to be clear, she's not going to set up any place protected. This is just going to be like out in the open in the square. Nice. Please kill this character. <laughs> Please kill Riz. <laughs> oh, that'd be too easy. Now, Adrian, this is all going to be in the acting. Mm, you yes. and everyone on this bus. Of course. We're going to pretend we're in danger, but make sure you stay clear of the crowds. Right, of course. And I'm sure that the that the ministry has done their utmost to people the garden with a stunt performers who can dive out of the way and take a hit, etc. And with our budget, we can add special effects. As we round the corner and are closing in on the garden itself. Oh dear. Oh dear. The root, day in, day out. To live the same life day after day. I've gone quite mad. And now I must divert from my accustomed route. Oh, that everyone puts their faith in the hands of one person each and every day, never knowing when the veneer of sanity may crack. (laughs) And he pulls the wheel, wrenches it to the side, and begins to drive right into the garden. (laughs) And Kirby's cueing the the passengers to scream, but... (laughs) Oh, they don't need any cueing. They start screaming for real. The crowds on the pavement of Covent Garden start screaming. And uh, did you say, Graham, that Ben had tampered with the bus? That sounds right, I think. Do do we want to do this via flashback? I think we'll do it via a flashback. And, you know, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to say you don't even need to roll because... The minister was right there beside you. She showed you just which bits to cut. And Riz has got that bag of tools, too, for you to use. So I I think as Ben gets off the bus, uh, ready to go with Riz, uh, there's a moment where he sees the minister and he knows how this works. He he needs to do something. And and so he does the minimum he possibly can, right? So... He knows he has to do something to the bus, but surely if he just, like, loosens a nut on one of the wheels. And so he would take one of Riz's tools, which I assume she'll hand to him. She's just put the bag down, and so it's just, like, sitting there open with the tools just, like, for you to take. And I look with some terror at the minister. And she just nods encouragingly. And Ben feels there's no way out. He takes one nut and he takes it up and places it in his pocket. And it's it's just one nut. I mean, that can't make the wheel come off. And yet the minister seems perfectly happy with this. And so Ben goes with, with Riz across Covent Garden. And then as he's looking at the minister across Covent Garden, he sort of fingers the nut in his pocket. And cutting back to the present, Adrian is there acting the hell out of this. <laughs> <laughs> You have convinced everyone on the bus that you are not in control of this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then you realise you aren't in control of this. As suddenly the bus lurches unexpectedly, just as you're steering perhaps a little close to the crowd, suddenly you're steering right into the crowd. And the bus is going faster, faster than you expected. Easy. (laughs) <laughs> These people aren't going to get a chance to get out of the way. Adrian, uh, easy. No, I, 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 uh, I don't have control over it. Cut, cut, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> it's Wolfman. Uh, not Wolfman, <laughs> but Wolf. An American werewolf in London. <laughs> Is Adrian doing anything as he realizes the total loss of control here? I will try to roll drive, and let me just tell you that my odds are not good. (laughs) I hope you have a lot of luck. Considering that the bus has been tampered with by Eldritch forces, then let's make this a hard roll as well. (laughs) Bastard. (laughs) That is a 50 over 20. Push it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I will push it. Let's see. <laughs> nice. Like, yeah, the desperate. 
So what are you doing to push this? Because you realise as you're pulling the steering wheel desperately that, it, yeah, it's just seized. It's not moving. And, yeah, you are perhaps a, a half a second away from hitting the first pedestrian. I don't even know that if in this time there would be like any sort of safety belt <laughs> like holding me to the seat. <laughs> oh, yes. I take that off and like clutch the wheel and put my whole weight against it, trying to wrench it away from its course. Bless you, Ross Bryant. So you're pushing a hard driving roll. <laughs> so you've got a 10% chance here, haven't you? Everything comes to this. No risk, no reward, right? <laughs> Here we go. Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> 16, un wait, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. It was a hard one. 16 over 20. <laughs> it was so close. Perhaps for a moment you'd feel the steering wheel give and you, you realize you've done it. I'm a hero. You've actually managed to swerve the bus <laughs> and you have, you have, you, you've turned it, you've turned it sharply. You've turned it too sharply, and the bus spins and starts toppling. Everyone on board the bus screams. As the bus comes down hard, you can hear bodies breaking and crunching underneath as the oh. bus lands on them. It skids at speed through Covent Garden, slamming into people, knocking them up in the air, slamming them into masonry. You can see... Just behind you, or at least maybe you can't, but the others can see just this trail of blood that is being left behind as the bus scrapes across the ground. <sighs> and perhaps Ben just notices the worst thing, perhaps, in the midst of all this carnage, all this chaos, all this screaming, is just the sight of over there, in the shadows, the minister smiling. <laughs> Let's have sand rolls off everyone, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, why not? No damage, though, right? That's a failure. I think that's a failure. <laughs> I rolled a four. This is great footage. <laughs> yeah, and Riz also succeeded. <laughs> oh, look, they look like wham bars under the bus. <laughs> if the bus is taken out, a living statue, I think that, like, that bolsters Riz's, you know, resolve. <laughs> She's like, yes, this is good. This is actually really good. So, we had failures from Adrian, who loses yes. <laughs> he loses one point of sanity. Oh, okay. But that may just be because you're so thrown around and concussed by what's happening that you didn't see the full horror. <laughs> On the other hand, poor Ben loses another five points of sanity. Oh, <laughs> goodness. no. I am at three. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but... Those of you on the bus, mm -hmm. I would like, let's make it hard dex rolls just to see whether you can grab onto something and stop yourself being thrown around too much. Love it. Hard dex. So I got to beat a 27. <laughs> this don't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. My dex is a 55. I had to get a 27. I got a 94. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I, I rolled a 100. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> I think that means that Kirby has got to take maximum damage here, but I will roll, however, for the unfortunate Mr. Trumple. Mm. <laughs> he might survive this. We'll see. Fingers crossed. I don't think he survives this. <laughs> <laughs> that is eight hit points of damage which is uh three more than i currently have oh yeah and i think it also qualifies as a major wound you said you had 12 hit points to start with so that's right that means death is on the table and with that yeah so Adrian pinballs around inside the driver's cabs. If only you hadn't taken your seatbelt off. Yeah. There's a reason why so many of the public information films you shot recently have been about the importance of seatbelts. Mm -hmm. But if only you'd listened to yourself there. That's right. I've said it so many times. But now, <laughs> yeah, thrown around with incredible force. Um. <laughs> it's your own narration going around in your head. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 
speed, speed, speed kills, <laughs> speed maims. When you don't buckle your belt, you will fly through windshields, be decapitated by gnarled steel. Speed destroys. Be so kind as to buckle your belt. And this goes through his head as perhaps he flies through the front windshield of the bus and his head is shorn off as it goes through the glass of the bus. Fantastic. And Kirby does, with that fumble, take the full 10 hit points of damage. The fun thing about that is even though you haven't seen my character sheet, I have 10 hit points. <laughs> so I think then what happens with Kirby is you do just about manage to grab hold of one of the poles. But then as the bus comes to a sudden halt, it hits a stone wall, of course, crushing a few pedestrians in the process. You're flung forward. And there is just this moment of realisation as you're flying towards the tripod that you brought that's fallen on its side. And just as Riz has warned you about so many times, you can feel yourself moving towards it backside first. And it impales you. It goes right up through your backside into your colon with catastrophic <gasps> consequences. <laughs> I like to imagine the last vision that he had was the, the top half of the bus shearing off and sliding forward. Like, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> and so there is this quiet that descends, this shocked calm almost, that descends on Covent Garden as the survivors stare in absolute disbelief at what's happened. There is the occasional sob and cry of the injured, but you know, Riz and Ben, you've managed to get this on film, I think. Well, actually, let's have a roll to see how well you photograph this. I assume Ben was the camera operator for this. That sounds right to me, if that's okay with Riz. Oh, yeah. Ben is doing what Riz says to do, so... Ah, oh, phew. Yes, yeah, so that's, um, that's under half of my skill, if that makes any difference. Yes, you got a hard success there. So I think, yes, you managed to film this perfectly. You tracked the collapse of the bus and you caught every gory moment, every person who was crushed. And just as a final scene, you even managed to capture Adrian Trumbull's head rolling away from the wreckage. <laughs> Ben looks at Riz and goes, Is it over? I think that depends on whether or not you got the shot. I got the shot. Then I, I think that's a wrap. I think we got it. The two of you hear a voice from behind you, a woman's voice that says, Excellent work. How soon can you have this edited and ready for distribution? If I turn around... What do I see? There's a woman standing behind you. You didn't even notice her getting there. The last time you saw her, she was about 100 yards over that way, and now she's right behind you. She's just a woman with very impassive features. Her hair is iron grey, but her face isn't particularly lined. It doesn't look young. It doesn't look old. There's something about it that perhaps makes you think of a wax mask. And you realise, as you're looking at her, you didn't see her lips move when she spoke. Mm -hmm. Just going to do a real quick sand roll here, which yeah. is, um, why is Riz is still cool with all this? <laughs> this is not phasing her at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It fits the character. And how about Ben? Ben is much less cool with this. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, and appropriately, that has taken you down to zero. Oh. And 
still without any movement of her face or lips, so you just hear her voice. You realise you're not hearing her voice with your ears, you're hearing it inside your head. And she says, Yes, I am very impressed with your work. Perhaps we should bring some of the production of these films in-house, as they say, at the Ministry. As she says in-house, Ben can feel you know, everything that he is being sort of sucked out of him. She looks at the two of you and says, And I think I'll leave it to one of you two to head up the new unit. It's only that I've, I've had more experience. It's just that I've been doing this a bit longer than Ben has. And, and so I feel like, uh, you know, just in terms of um, familiarity with all of it, I feel like perhaps I might be the better candidate. As you say that, she bends down and she picks up a piece of broken glass that has flown off the, the bus. It's still got blood smeared on it. And she holds it out on the palm of her hand and says... I'll leave it to the two of you to decide who the successful applicant will be. Is that a good point to leave things? You are listening to Ain't Slayed Nobody. For ad-free episodes, heaps of bonus content, and special programming, please join our Patreon posse at patreon.com slash ain't slayed. Or subscribe to Ain't Slayed Nobody Plus at Apple Podcasts. See the show notes for full credits and help us grow by posting friendly reviews and spreading the word to your friends and followers. Thank you and good luck out there. <laughs>